autophagy consists of the words auto meaning self and phagy meaning to eat. Autophagy is a process in which a cell eats its own contents. In other words, autophagy happens when the cell decides that certain cytoplasmic contents of its own are actually problematic and therefore it gets rid of them by fusing them into the lysosomes. Autophagy happens in several pathologic as well as physiologic states. For example, during periods of starvation, some cells live by cannibalizing themselves and recycling the digested contents. Some pathogens are degraded by autophagy and there are many diseases such as Alzheimer's that are associated with the dysregulation of autophagy. There are three different mechanisms through which autophagy can happen. Uh, the first type is chaperone-mediated, which is direct translocation across the lysosomal membrane mediated by chaperone proteins. So this is a lysosome here. And here is like the content that is supposed to be digested in. So the organelle or whatever protein that we want to get rid of. And here we have like our little chaperone protein which helps this digestion, like this, in this uh, direct translocation. And eventually the content ends up inside of the lysosome. So number two would be microautophagy, which is the inward invagination of the lysosomal membrane. So the content, so this is once again a, the lysosome. And the content would be just uh, uh, just trapped inside of an inward invagination of the lysosome and uh, just end up eventually inside of the lysosome and get digested by, by the lysosomal enzymes. So these first two types are just as simple as that. So let's get to macroautophagy. Macroautophagy, on the other hand, it's basically the delivery of the content to the lysosome in a double membrane bound autophagic vacuole. So what does that mean? Let's take a look at that. So we have our little lysosome here. So all this just happening inside of the cytosol, like we have the lysosome and then we have our content inside of a double membrane bound vacuole which is called an autophagosome and then eventually so this is the autophagosome and then eventually like the autophagosome and the lysosome they just uh, fuse together and therefore like the their contents would uh, would blend together and eventually it ends up uh, digesting the content that we want digested by the lysosomal enzymes but this one is a little bit more complicated than that and this is also like the most important type of, type of autophagy like most of the times oftentimes when we just say autophagy this is what we are talking about so let's get into details a little bit about this one all right uh, so let's take a look at the third type which is the most common one and it is also frequently simply referred to as autophagy here's the process through which it happens so firstly we have this bunch of organelles or intracellular content that we want to get rid of and uh, in order to do that, uh, firstly, a membrane, which is also called a phagophore, is formed within the cytosol. It is believed to be derived from the endoplasmic reticulum. Then the membrane gets elongated to properly circle the content that is to be phagocytosed. Then the membrane closes around the content 
creating what is called a mature autophagosome. So here is our mature autophagosome. All the content is enclosed within the circle and inside of this vacuole, and it is ready to be fused with the lysosome. Eventually, the autophagosome fuses with the lysosome, forming an autophagolysosome. So here is our autophagolysosome here, in which everything is actually fused together. Okay, so before we finish, let's just get into a few more details regarding the initiation and the elongation phase. A few genes associated with the formation of autophagosome, these genes are referred to as ATGs. Triggers such as starvation activates such genes, which leads to the formation of an initiation complex of four proteins that in turn stimulate the formation of a nucleation complex. This initiates the formation of the phagophore. Okay, so let's move on from the initiation phase to the elongation phase. The microtubule associated protein lichen 3 comes to hold during the elongation process. One of its functions is the selective process of targeting the right content to be degraded. It's useful to know that LC3 production is increased during autophagy and therefore making LC3 a very good marker to identify the cells in which autophagy is occurring. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to take a look at synapse.org.